Hi guys, welcome to this video looking at reaction pathways. So we're going to use ethanol, C2H5OH, as an example. Ethanol can be produced by either fermentation of glucose, C6H12O6, or by hydration of ethene, C2H4. But which way is best? To figure this out, scientists look at five main things. The percentage yield, so how much we end up with, the atom economy, how much of our reactants is turned into useful products, the rate of reaction, so can we make it quickly, the equilibrium position, if it's a reversible reaction, will it naturally favour our product or the reactants, and then finally, the usefulness of the byproduct. If we can't get 100% atom economy, can we use the byproducts so they don't go to waste? So let's look at these two reactions then. And we'll start off with glucose. Glucose is broken down with yeast into ethanol and carbon dioxide in a process called fermentation. It produces a yield of 15% and an atom economy of 51.1%. By the way, you don't need to remember these numbers. They'll always be given to you in any questions on reaction pathways. It also has a slow rate of reaction and you don't have to worry about the position of equilibrium because it's not reversible. And then finally, for the usefulness of the byproducts, you've got CO2. Now you might think that's a greenhouse gas, that's a bad thing, but it can also be used by drinks companies, so it can be sold to them to make the bubbles and fizzy drinks. So you have got a use for that byproduct. If we move on to ethene then. Ethene is reacted with water or steam to turn it into ethanol. And as you can see, it's a reversible reaction. This process is called hydration. It has a yield of 95%, which is much higher than fermentation as well as an atom economy of 100%, because we've only got one product. The rate of reaction is high, so it'll be reacting fast. However, the position of equilibrium is to the left. That means that more ethene than ethanol will be present at any time in the reaction. The unreacted ethene can be recycled through though, until it does react, which allows us to get our 95% yield that we mentioned before. And then finally, because there are no byproducts, we don't need to consider that. So if we compare the two, fermentation had a lower yield than ethene, which was 95%. But because the equilibrium was to the left, it will take longer to get that 95% yield. Fermentation has a lower atom economy, but the carbon dioxide can be used to make the bubbles and fizzy drinks. Whereas ethene gives 100% atom economy, so if only wanted to produce ethanol, that's a massive advantage. Fermentation has a lower rate of reaction than using ethene, so that's a disadvantage. And then the other thing that you can look at is where we get these raw materials from, the glucose and the ethene. Glucose is from plants, which can be renewable as long as you replant the plants. And then ethene is from crude oil, which is definitely not renewable, so that's a disadvantage. So which method should you use? And that's really up to you, ish. You would be expected to use scientific ideas to back up your argument, depending on which pathway that you chose. So for example, if you chose fermentation, you would say it's because the raw materials are renewable and the byproducts can be used to make the fizzy drinks, so there's no waste. You'd also mention the downside would be that the yield is lower and it's slower to make. If you chose the hydration of ethene, you would say that it gives 100% atom economy and there's a fast rate of reaction. You'd also say the equilibrium is to the left, which is a disadvantage, but the ethene can be recycled, allowing you to get a high yield. That really is everything you need to know for this video. So let's have a look at how the examiner could ask you a question on this. Have a read through these questions, pause the video and have a go. As soon as you're ready, press play and we'll go through. Okay, let's go through. Again, there's no right or wrong answer to this as long as you use scientific reasoning. So if you chose pathway one, you could say that it has a higher yield than pathway two, meaning you would get more of the product that would get you a mark. If you chose pathway two, you could say that although it's a lower yield, the reaction is faster, so you'll get it quicker. And you've got the reverse argument for that, which is that pathway one, the reaction is slower, so it will take longer to produce your iron chloride. In terms of atom economy, if you chose pathway one, it has a higher atom economy, so there are no wasted atoms or reactants. Pathway two has a lower atom economy, but the byproduct is water, and that has many uses, so either of those. 
If you chose pathway two, you can also mention the fact that chlorine is toxic. So from pathway one, which is dangerous or could cost money to keep safe, therefore pathway two would be better. And then finally, I'd look at the production method. If you chose pathway two, you would say that the electricity used to make the iron hydroxide could be from a renewable resource, but pathway one, definitely non-renewable, therefore pathway two could be better. So I would then come to a conclusion and say, I have chosen pathway one and then give my reasons, or I have chosen pathway two, give you reasons. Hopefully you can see that as long as your reasoning has scientific logic behind it, it's easy to get some marks on this question. Just remember the different things that you need to compare when answering it and you'll be fine. I have got a review question for you, so have a read through, have a go and let me know your answer in the comments and I'll tell you if you're right. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.